Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today the video is going to be balanced a very different way. Today the dyeing is the smallest part of the video and the washing will be the longest part of the video because I'm finally going to look at Synthropol, uh, a textile detergent that is supposed to help with removing excess dye, uh, I think. It should, it's supposed to help keep excess dye in suspension after you've dyed and prevent it from going and coloring potentially light areas that are left. Uh, but uh, we aren't going to be checking that second part today. I just thought that I would dye some yarn in a color that I know is probably going to bleed. And then we'll try washing with this and see if the process goes faster. Uh, very, not in a quantitative way, in a very qualitative way. And what better color to use than some purple pop and a super, super ancient dye stock because the first time I used this, I realized, okay, this is super pigmented and then it's taken me a really long time and I'm still not going to be finishing it. So today we are going to dye 300 grams of Stroll Fingering Weight yarn. Uh, but before we get started on that, in this pot, I have 24 cups of water. I'm going to add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tablespoons of white vinegar to start. I just added a half cup of the ancient 1% dye stock of Purple Pop. I thought I was filming, wasn't actually filming. Uh, this is about 120 milliliters. And so that would be equivalent to about 0.4 grams of dye per 100 grams of yarn. And everything's in here. We are heating up slowly, but I'm going to come in with the yarn now. Here I am with 300 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. Um, and you can see the vibrancy in here. Now, I'm not specifically trying to dip dye, uh, but functionally <laughs> that is a little bit with what's happening here. You can see that this is a vibrant neon purpley pink color. The blues in here typically strike really fast, so therefore we will have some fairly obvious breaking in here, but oh yeah, check out that purple versus the pink. But anyway, I am going to leave all the yarn in here to start heating up. Now, as I mentioned, Purple Pop is a bit of a finicky color and it probably will not all absorb while it's hot. It is definitely one where you need to heat it up and then let it cool completely with a lot of acid. Uh, you can see that we've got like a lot of pink in there and I think even after simmering for I mean, we're not anywhere near a simmer yet, but I think that even if we simmer for, goodness, uh, 40 minutes, there will still be color in the water. Um, and so my plan is to heat it up so it's just below a simmer, then let it stay sort of at that temperature, maybe slight bubbles, but mostly below a simmer for 40 minutes once it's nice and hot. And then I'll turn off the heat and let it cool completely in the pot. I'm not sure if we'll be checking in, but the big step will come tomorrow when we're going to wash this. Now, I have used the Centropole, and I have no idea if I'm saying that correctly. I have used it once in my Valentine's Day video from 2021, uh, and it didn't seem to dry out my hands a ton. I've heard it really can dry out your hands. I haven't really seen that problem, um, but <laughs> uh, I mean, I've been washing my hands so much anyway that it's hard to know. So I also will try to compare how things feel in that respect as well. But I don't know what we're gonna do with the third skein. I figured it's good to have a third just in case, but we're certainly gonna wash one of these skeins with just dish soap and then one with the synthropol. It has been about 40 minutes and the color that is left in here um, is about a slight little pink. There is some amount of color in there, but most of the color is in the yarn. And this is the stage where I will be turning off the heat 
and letting this cool completely overnight just because it'll take that time and some of that pink might still be in there but that's why we picked this color and yeah so let's get ready for a big morning of washing <laughs> it is the next morning and I am ready to remove the yarn from the pot and we'll see how much color is left we've got a beautiful bright pink and purple yarn I am going to squeeze out a lot of the liquid and I'm going to do the same for all three skeins. <laughs> Watch that I used, I didn't use enough of the color so it didn't bleed. Uh, if that's the case then we'll try this again. <laughs> um, but we have the third skein just in case, um, I'm not sure. So the water has the slightest pink tinge to it. Slight enough that I'm not even sure. Okay, you can kind of see it on camera. It's very, very subtle. And is what I would like to see after using something like Purple Pop. But now let's go to the sink. I've got one skein here and it's a little sunny. I'm not sure the best way to logistically film this. <laughs> so we're gonna make it up as we go along. Because I think that a lot of it isn't gonna be based on what we see per se, um, but I or how many times I change the water. I think a lot is going to be based on my gut. Okay, I see the slightest, slightest pink tinge. The water is, and maybe I'm going to want to not use straight. Okay, I'm going to actually make. We haven't done any soap yet. I want the water a little warmer because it's uncomfortable. Um, straight tap water in January in Massachusetts is frigid, not cold. So I'm making it still pretty frigid. I had to add some hot water so that way it is uh, bearable to keep my hands. <laughs> okay, that's a pretty good position. Okay, because it, you know, it's not even lukewarm water at this point. It's still, I mean, that's pretty clear, but we're going to add soap. And I'm expecting that we'd see some bleeding with soap. So I took just about like a, an almond-sized dollop of soap. And the soap I'm using, I guess it matters more. It's seventh generation free and clear. I like it because it's scent free and it's color free which doesn't often make a huge difference per se. Um, but, you know, I'm always just like, that way if I see a hint, I'm not like, was it the tint of the soap? Okay, and I'm seeing, this isn't a lot of bleeding. <laughs> and on camera, it's barely registering. Um, it's really not bad uh, because, I mean, I don't want to dye yarn that I know is going to be super problematic, but that is, some amount of bleeding. And I think I will probably do two rounds of soap. But I think that what the Synthropole is supposed to do, and I don't know if standard soaps can't do it, um, is it's supposed to help bind what this dye. So that way it sort of stays stuck to the soap versus in the water. And so then it won't uh, go back in to the yarn or then if you had hand painted yarn with white patches sometimes when you wash it the if dye leaks out it might color those areas a pastel color and so it's to help prevent that as well um, now my tap water does run slightly acidic um, so that is something to keep in mind Now, one other benefit of the Centerpole is it's a low foaming soap, which means that in a lot of cases with a superwash yarn, the foaming may not make a big difference, but if you have a more delicate yarn, it could make more of a difference and that could lead to some agitation. Um, <laughs> you know, it's hard to intentionally get something that bleeds. This is so slight that I am not really concerned. <laughs> Uh, but I guess I'm going to have to pay attention to the next time I get like a big 
a big bleeder. I am going to add soap one more time. So I just added that much onto my hand, which is more than I would be using of the Simper Pulse. Um, and so I'm not doing this to try to like shift the results in any kind of way. Uh, but I just I've realized that it takes a while for me to rinse this Simper Pulse out. And one thing that I observed at least right off the bat, is that I don't really like this. I mean, it's not that I don't like the scent of the Center Pole, it's just as someone who is sensitive to scents, I prefer unscented. Um, I like citrus scents um, that I can handle. But am I seeing bleeding? I don't even know. Yeah, I guess we're seeing some. But again, like this, is not a worrying amount of bleeding. So I think this isn't gonna be the best example of a difference, I don't think. But, you know, so we saw, saw some bleeding after a second application of soap. So maybe that's what I should keep in mind. But I'm expecting that as I rinse this soap out, I'm not gonna see any more bleeding and that I can declare the stain complete. So I started to say, my tap water does run slightly acidic. Yeah, I'm not seeing any more bleeding. We'll do one more just to see. Uh, my tap water does run slightly acidic, which means that uh, it doesn't cause bleeding on itself. If you have slightly basic or alkaline water, you then might be able to see more bleeding uh, when you're dyeing your yarn. So that is just something to keep in mind and if you see a lot of bleeding you can try adding acid to your rinse or if you're dealing with like a some colors that you think might bleed you can always do a bleed test on a swatch but if you're concerned about bleeding uh add some vinegar when you're gonna block um so yeah i mean this we've been able to rinse it out so the other thing that i will say right now and actually, I'm just going to go set this in the spin dryer. I'm not actually going to start spinning it yet. So thinking about the soaps and what the Synthropole is claiming, and it's not just a claim. I mean, other dyers use it, um, so it is good for that purpose. But I would say that one thing that I cannot immediately say without knowing any chemistry behind it uh, is that the synthropole, that like a, a dish soap can't do what a synthropole can do. So it's possible that since it's a textile detergent and it's low foam, it'll cause less damage to your textiles. And so it's been developed for washing textiles versus this soap, which maybe is a little harsher. So that is something that I don't know and is something that I want to keep in mind as well. Uh, so use when low foaming is required to remove unseeded grease, oils, and silk gum from silk, cotton, and other natural fibers. Use one eighth to one quarter cup per washing machine load with hot water. After dyeing, use the same way in a final wash. Keeps excess dye in suspension, preventing back staining of light colored areas. So. I always get uh, people being like, you didn't follow the directions. I'm not washing in a washing machine, so therefore I'm not measuring out that amount, but I will be using just the tiniest, tiniest amount of this as we move forward. And here we are with skein two. Uh, sometimes I refer to myself as like a super smeller um, because like I just sense just get in my nose and I think because I wasn't always this way, although I never liked strong scents, but ever since I was pregnant with Lucas, <laughs> I was just like, my nose. <laughs> I've just been really aware of it. So we also have some very, very minimal, minimal bleeding here, but I do want to do a rinse uh, before coming in with the central ball. And, okay, so I'm gonna open it. And I am going to just pour, okay, that's probably more than I wanted to use, but I suppose that's a similar amount, I'm gonna rinse off the bottle. I suppose that's a similar amount to what I used um, 
of the dish soap. And you can see that it's low foaming, but it is foaming because I think I added more than I intended to. Um, and the scent, I would describe the scent as like a soap scent, but it is there. Okay, so what I'm curious about, there's a chance we could see more bleeding right now. And another experiment, and Rebecca, take note, another experiment that I could do in the future is to use a color like Purple Pop that bleeds, have our yarn with whites left behind, and then do the washing. Ooh, that actually looks more like more bleeding, so maybe we're pulling out the, the dye? I don't know. Uh, but so, anyway, I think that I want to do this experiment again, but I'll do it with we leave white because we can see if the dye that's coming out will stain the white of pastel in any noticeable way, which I could have done today by tossing a mini skein in, which actually is another way to do it, to do this experiment, but um, the bleeding here, I would say qualitatively, it's not bad, but it looks like it's more pronounced than what I saw uh, with the first game. So I don't know how conclusive this is, uh, but we'll see if here we see much of anything as we're rinsing it out. And then I'll have to decide if we do a second round of soap. And oh, this water is so cold. It is, I think, 13 degrees outside today. So one big perk is that this will suck out all the excess dye right away. And already, I mean, clearly there's still soap in there, but that is a lot paler. So, huh. And I'm still rinsing out the soap. We'll do a second round just as a check. But maybe it'll just make it a little faster because on the first one, and I didn't want to do like 10 rounds of soap or something, but we did see more bleeding with soap. So maybe, and we'll have to check the tapes. And of course, the it's a cloudy day, so the lighting is shifting, so things could be different. But yeah, I would say that there's a, well, that's clear, that there is a non-zero chance that, huh, this is cool. Okay, I'm gonna try to add just a tiny bit. Okay, uh, I poured it onto the bottle. <laughs> um, I don't know if you could see see it on the edge, but here, I'll rinse that off. I was trying to just get a little bit. You can see it is going in as I rinse off the bottle. Now what I've heard is that this can make your hands really, really dry, uh, but I recommend like a really strong hand, um, mo hand moisturizing routine. I like to get a good like uh, moisturizing soap and then add uh, some aquaphor to it. That helps when your hands get really chapped. So, I see a hint, but not as much. And I'm I'm encouraged. So I haven't yet decided if I'm gonna switch all of my washing to the super bowl. I have it, but I've also had it for probably over a year just sitting in my like bin of chemnet stuff. So I would say that this is really promising. I need to go and look up how much this costs because I am curious. But rinsing this out, I'm not seeing any bleeding. So I think that third and final skein I wanna do with just plain dish soap again. Now I will say that the the yarn does have a hint of a sense of, I'll rinse this yarn out one more time. The yarns that have a hint of scent, but as I said, I'm super sensitive to them, and it's not bothering me, per se. It's just not a sense that I don't notice at all. So I'm noticing it, and I think it'll just take some amount of getting used to. Um, it's like using, um, 
you know, it's, I think it's just different. Okay. I'm going to go set you in the spin dryer. Now, one thing I didn't do is label the yarn so I can see how they feel after. Uh, maybe I'll try to do that, but maybe I'll forget in the conclusion. <laughs> so if you've been watching me for a while, then you probably know what my least favorite part of filming 10 minutes videos is, and it's filming the washing stage. Just because I feel like I, there's parts of my videos where I, I just, you know, when I'm like, subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video, and like I publish videos every Tuesday and Friday morning, there's parts that feel somewhat automatic, and just the dishwashing, I try to keep what I filmed in general to about a minute, just because I have a lot of examples of it. Um, so that... And I'm sure as you're watching, you might notice things that I'm doing differently with these skeins. Um, but this is just really about giving a thorough impression of how this is going for me. Okay. And I just squirted the soap straight in. So, yeah, I would say that the soap rinses out when it's this soap a little bit faster. And why do I think that it's odorless? I suppose it has a soap smell, but it's the, the soap smell one's less strong. Maybe the center pull is also just more concentrated. Um, because, I mean, this might be similar, but you can see the level of foam <laughs> has increased for sure. For sure. Uh, my hands, well, my, my poor hands, <laughs> being submerged. So, uh, and other non yarn related stuff, but a funny story. Uh, I got a Fitbit uh, for myself just because I was curious um, about how many steps I'm taking and things like that. But, when I was dyeing yarn the other day, it was like, congratulations on your like 30 minute swimming exercise. And I guess because of all the like moving my hands <laughs> over a dye pot, I have it on the clip right now. I thought that I was swimming. So I thought that that was pretty funny. Okay. So there's still a little bit in that rinse. I feel like I wish that I had something that was, I've never wished for something that was bleeding heavily, but I kind of wish for something that was bleeding heavily, um, which is hilarious. Because if something that's not bleeding a lot doesn't make as big of a difference, I mean, that's feeling pretty clear. So I think the long and short of it is that I can't make a huge conclusion here, uh, except to say that, and oh right, I want to go check on the price. I'm going to let this keep filling and I'll be right back. All right, so from Dharma Trading Company, this 16 ounce bottle of Synthropole was about $5.00. And I believe that my dish soap was probably around three, anywhere from two to four, four 25 ounces. So it's more expensive, but not substantially more expensive. And it does seem like the better choice would have been for me to use a fiber reactive dye. Uh, and I think that it's supposed to make even more of a difference when you're using fiber reactive dyes and something and using hot water for the rinse, which I don't recommend using hot water for rinses with um, acid dyes because, oh, there's a tinge if I'm being picky. Otherwise, like, I wouldn't worry about that. Um, I don't think I'm going to add soap a second time uh, because I don't think it's really needed. But, uh, yeah, with fiber reactive dyes and cotton, that's when there's so much rinsing. So using hot water with the simple hole Maybe, maybe that's actually the next experiment that I should do. I should dye some cotton yarn 
um, with just either professional fiber reactive dyes or tulip tie dye and then go to wash it and see. So I think I have some ideas of ways that we can move forward to explore this. So right now, first, I guess technically second impressions because I've used it once another day, but my first impressions are really that uh, the Synthropol works great as a detergent. It's low foaming as indicated. I don't know if it's substantially better than say using dip soap to say you need to go and purchase this for dyeing yarn. Like I highly, highly recommend it. I think that I would probably still recommend it and I could see myself slowly transitioning to using it going forward, especially as I start dyeing more yarn in colorways occasionally and things like that. Um, if it can make the washing stage faster uh, or help me preserve pastel areas without catching color coming out, then that's a good thing. And so I'd be willing to try it more uh, and, you know, and come back and report. I mean, my hands do feel dry right now, um, but I was also <laughs> washing a lot of yarn with a lot of soap for however long I was filming that. So, and this doesn't mean that the yarn that I dyed won't bleed in hot water or if the pH of the water rinsing later on is too high. Uh, it's a risk with one of these colors. In general, I try to always rinse things until they're clear, but just like if you have a brand new deep colored pair of blue jeans, you wouldn't wash it with your favorite white shirt. Or if you have a brand new red sock, you might not wash it with your whites. In general, I don't separate whites and darks anymore because I use like but for the first washes, I always do for deep colored clothing. Um, so it's just something that with different, the chemistry and pH of different water, you, it could happen. So that's just worth keeping in mind. Obviously it's not great when a color bleeds, but you know, it can happen with even commercially produced yarn. Anyway, I'm gonna go moisturize my hands, hang up the yarn to dry because I just turned off the spin dryer, and then we'll come back and talk about the finished yarn. So, is this like a groundbreaking like soap comparison video? No, definitely not. Um, and I don't think there's anything in here that would skew your choice one way or the other. Um, but, uh, yeah, I... Uh, I'm excited with some of the other ideas that uh, I discussed in this video. So let's go look at the finished dry yarn. I did mark the one synthropol skein with a tiny S that I can barely see, but at least wet, I can still smell the difference between them. So, um, which again, the scent isn't bad, it's not like floral or something, but it is a scent that is not wet yarn that I'm used to. So just throwing that out there. <laughs> I just quickly tested and I do not detect any scent difference between the three skeins. Uh, between, and I think it was this one, yes. This was our th Synthropol skein and these were the dish soap. And uh, my hands are dry just because I've done a lot of washing today, not this project. But I would say that like, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Let me mix them up. <laughs> I'm shuffling them. Cause I was like, ooh, could it be like a hair softer? Although my hands desperately need moisturizing. So let's see. Okay, this one feels a hair softer and it is not the Synthropole one. So I don't think that there's a difference in the way that these skeins feel. So I don't have many conclusions about the Synthropole and if it's better or worse. I think that ultimately, uh, when this example, it didn't make a huge difference, but we were dealing with a superwash yarn and we didn't have that much bleeding uh, on this colorway. So therefore, uh, I need to, 
I guess, refilm this. And maybe next time I have a lot of bleeding on something, I will film a dedicated <laughs> Synthropole video uh, from that so that way we can do a comparison. So I will keep an eye out for that moving forward. Now on to the yarn. This isn't entirely dip dyed, except it was because I did dip the yarn into the pot as uh, we were dyeing it and those blues and that purple pop strike so fast. They strike so, so, so fast. And this colorway is so broken in that we've got purples and pinks. And actually I'm a little curious. So I would say that the purple parts are a hair more saturated than the pink parts. Um, the areas that look more gray are the purple ones right here. So I was just curious if the saturation would look uh, close or not. But I mean, clearly there's more pigment in those areas because the pinks took so, so long to bind and those blues struck faster. So that just makes sense. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and let me know if there are some other videos that you would like me to do that focus on parts of dyeing yarn that are less of the dyeing yarn part and more of some of the other things that go into it. I do have on my list to do a making a skein from a ball of yarn, how I might set that up, use, a, use the knitting knotty or a chair, and then tie it after. So that is on my list still. Um, but if there's other things that you would like to see, please let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I am sorry that uh, this didn't give a broad grand conclusion one way or the other, but this was one of my first attempts to look at this side by side and I can't believe I'm hoping for some bleeding so I can try to look at this more in the future. But anyway, subscribe and turn on notifications, smash that bell, all that jazz. And if you enjoy my content and want to help support the content here on the channel, I do have a Patreon. Uh, it's just patreon.com slash chemnitz. And you can find the links in the video description. And I offer some really cool perks like early access to new content, behind the scenes sneak peeks, and more. So you should go and check that out. There's also links to all kinds of things in the video description, like where you can find me on social media, my favorite tools and equipment, and things like that. So it is always worth checking out uh, my descriptions. Thank you so much for watching.